Hi everyone, it's Julin and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the second part of the Q&A slash just like college questions video. There is a change in environment. I was finally kind of able to decorate this area, ignore the plastic bag on that plant. Um, but you guys can't really see it. Um, but anyway, but also last time I moved my desk to record this and I just didn't want to deal with that because I have a ton of stuff on my desk right now. So we are going to just record here. I hope you guys don't mind the change in environment. So before we start, I just wanted to address something that happened in the comment section of my last video. Uh, there was a situation regarding a miscommunication between my roommate and I. Uh, I did privately message her after I saw the comment and apologized and we were able to resolve the miscommunication. I had gotten her consent for the first few videos where her face showed and in later videos, even though her face didn't really show, sometimes her back or side would be in the background and I stupidly assumed that she wouldn't mind. But obviously consent changes and I should have consulted her on it uh, because she could be uncomfortable with it and that was my fault but we have agreed to blur her out of those videos I also wanted to address the fact that I wasn't trying to slander her or talk badly about her in any way I was genuinely just trying to share my experience with having a roommate and had slash have no bad feelings towards her but yeah, so moving on to the actual video, today I'm going to be doing the Q&A part 2. As you guys know, I posted the Q&A part 1 on Monday. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that yet, I would recommend going to that first, just because I explain a bit of who I am, uh, what college I go to, what grade I'm in, and things like that. And so that might be a bit more helpful to start with. So if you do want to go see the first part first, go check out that link in the description box or there should be an eye icon something thingy up in the corner somewhere and you can just click on that. But today will be the second part and last part of this video. I did re-record um, my Q&A portion or the second part of the Q&A portion. The only reason for that is because that part was towards the end of my recording session and I guess I got really tired because I started talking really really slowly and it was just frustrating watching it so I decided to re-record this part so finally on to the second part of my Q&A so the first one is or what made you choose to go to Northeastern so I kind of mentioned it in my first video but basically I, it was really just the financial aid and the geographic location of the college that really made me want to go there um, at least compared to the other colleges I had in mind that I could uh, go to Northeastern was definitely the better choice um, just in terms of for me personally the location as well as the affordability but also obviously Northeastern is a great school their co-op program is really awesome and for me wanting to have my own creative business I felt like that would be really important just to gain actual experience in college so that's Honestly, why I ended up going, the bigger reasons were more the financial aid and the location of it. As I mentioned, I really just didn't want to stay in Florida and Boston was perfect for me. My sister was already going to school there and so I would also have someone I knew there, which was really nice. Yeah, just like kind of everything worked out for me um, to be able to choose to go to Northeastern. It's kind of a simple answer, but I'm sorry I didn't really have anything deeper than that, but yeah. Uh, I think I kind of touched on the bathroom situation in the last video, but I got I just got so many questions about it, so I just wanted to address it again. So as freshmen, you guys are most likely going to get communal bathrooms unless you get East Village or I think it's International Village. Either of those should have private bathrooms. I think those are the only ones where the freshman dorms do have private bathrooms and by pa private bathrooms I actually mean you'll be sharing it with three other people usually you'll be put into a suite style double and so you'll have a roommate and then uh, your dorm will be connected to a bathroom which will be connected to another dorm room and they'll have two people in there and so four people will be sharing one bathroom for me I actually did have that private bathroom because I was in East Village because I was an honor student um, 
And so I did share a bathroom with three other people. And as nice as it is, it definitely also has its like cons as well. For one thing, at least in East Village, our windows don't open. And so ventilation is kind of sucky um, in general, even without the bathroom. But then within the bathroom is like one of the only vents that kind of goes outside of our room. And even then, it's not that great. So sometimes you will smell things from the bathroom and it will spread and it's gonna suck a little but the pros kind of weighed out the cons but that was really one of the main things and then the second thing for me was our suite mates very often forgot to unlock the door because there are two doors so if you want to lock the, the doors you do have to lock both of them and sometimes they would forget to lock ours and just go back to their room. Usually it doesn't matter because they'll be in their dorm and you can text them or knock and ask them to open it. But sometimes you'll wake up early in the morning and have to pee and you won't be able to use the restroom. Um, and I personally like try to wake them up a little and like knocked on their door. But they still didn't wake up. It was like 5 in the morning so I get it. So I ended up having to go downstairs and go to the public bathrooms there, which wasn't bad, but obviously in like 5 in the morning when you wake up to just use the restroom, you don't really want to go downstairs. But yeah, and the last thing that I would say was like the worst thing was just that the walls are super thin. I don't know if it's in every dorm, but at least in East Village, oh my gosh. Like literally, the people next door can be having a conversation and you would hear everything. That also means the bathroom as well. So you can hear them peeing, you can hear them going number two, you can hear them showering, everything. Literally, you could hear from the bathroom or the room or the other room. So if you're a bit pee shy like me, um, it is a bit awkward. I actually ended up finding another spot. Um, I feel like a lot of college students end up finding like the spot to go, whether you're like in class or like from, if you don't want to go in the communal bathrooms, you like figure out the spots where like it's less awkward to go number two and things like that. Some people just really don't care and will go in the private bathroom and that's totally fine. I never minded when my roommates or my sweet mates went, but I didn't want to go. And for me, I'm also lactose intolerant. So there were just those rough times where I didn't want to go in the private bathroom. So I would go downstairs. At least in East Village, we have uh, the basement area where it's classrooms, but a lot of the times they're not in use and But there's a family bathroom and then the girls and the guys bathroom which are like stalls But there's a family bathroom and you can lock it and it's just one bathroom <laughs> And so I would usually go there, you know, like you just want to go to the bathroom in peace sometimes And you really can't do that in the private bathrooms yeah, you guys will figure it out. It's gonna be okay. Honestly, from what my friends have told me, the communal bathrooms aren't too bad either. You just like kind of take your stuff with you. So you'll probably want like one of those caddy bags and things like that. I just like, I wouldn't be too scared of the communal bathrooms. I know a lot of my friends had them and they genuinely didn't mind and it, it was perfectly fine. I have no idea what they're like, but I'm sure it'll be okay. And either way, like, you guys will have a good time. You won't worry too much about the bathroom situation once you're there. <laughs> okay, and then another question was about roommates again and whether you guys randomly pair or you, or whether I, sorry, ran, randomly got paired or did it mutually. Um, I actually did mine mutually. I genuinely, for some reason, don't remember how I found her, but we just kind of started talking on Instagram through the DMs. Um, and I just wanted to do it mutually just because I do have a YouTube channel and an Etsy shop and my sticker machines are super loud and can take up a bit of space. And obviously with my YouTube channel, I record and so if someone's like uncomfortable with the idea of me recording at all, I didn't want to, you know, have them be uncomfortable when I do have to record for my videos. And so I found her on Instagram. We talked and then we kind of moved to iMessage and we talked 
and we decided to pair it mutually. But I also wouldn't be too afraid with going random. I know a lot of kids who did go random and they were perfectly fine. I wouldn't worry about it too much just because even if you guys don't end up becoming like super close or end up becoming like friends or anything, a lot of the times like learning to live together looks very different from becoming friends and even if you're friends you may not actually work together in terms of living together i wouldn't worry about the friends part if anything if you do find a mutual make sure you work together in terms of like your living habits and stuff so yeah okay and then the last um college question was does your meal plan allow you to swipe at starbucks panera etc um as well as another one that asked like what the food is like so personally i really struggled in the beginning with the food i think going from like my mom's homemade korean meals to um to like completely mostly american dining hall food uh, i struggled a lot in the beginning uh it was just it didn't seem very appetizing to me and it's so weird because when i came back home i kind of craved things that i ate in boston in the dining halls but then there, I craved Korean food so bad. I would ask my sister to make me, because she had a kitchen, I would ask my sister to make me like bulk kimchi bokkeumbap and I would freeze it and then microwave and eat it and it was like glorious. But yeah, so I personally struggle with the food. It's not like horrible or anything. It's definitely better than like public school cafeteria food if you guys know what I'm talking about. It was just mediocre American food. Um, I yeah I wouldn't have too many expectations for it. I will say though they do have those off-campus on-campus -ca options is what I call them but basically they're like off-campus eateries like uh, Subway or Popeyes um, and like this random pizza place that I've really never heard of and like Chitaco and things like that. Those options you can actually use a meal swipe for. You can't use it for the whole menu but you'll see that once you get there like they have a specific menu that you can use for meal swipes. It's honestly one of the better dining food options. If anything, the places that I went to the most were the off-campus on-campus options. I really like Subway. Um, a lot of kids complain about it in the beginning because they only let you have a six inch and there were only three subway like variety options um and it was like the veggie one and the spicy italian and like chicken breast or something and everyone complained so much because if you calculate our meal swipes it's like 17 20 dollars for each meal swipe is what we're paying and we were like, um, Subway does not cost that much at all. And so they changed it and let us pretty much get anything on the menu. Um, and it's a foot long as well as a chip, like, as well as chips and a drink. Anyway, and so that was really nice. And so I would go to Subway pretty much the most because the other ones are definitely like a bit heavier, a bit oilier, like chicken sandwiches and burgers and stuff. But the other place is Stwest and that was like a marketplace style uh, dining hall and I think it did change because of COVID I don't I have no idea what it was like before COVID but with COVID a meal swipe equal 10 points and so like certain foods would be worth 10 points there uh, but it was nice because they did have more like snack options that you could like keep in your dorm and eat later on and they had some ramen like cup ramen and things like that too for me my favorite part of Stwest was their spicy salmon sushi their sushi is like not great. The rice is super wet and like almost like like super sticky. Yeah, it doesn't look great, but I promise you after a certain point, you're like, this is the best thing on campus. Um, for me, the only one I liked was spicy salmon. I have tried the like tuna and the crab and it was not good in my opinion. I also kind of started cooking in my dorm. After a while, I ended up getting a hot plate, a pot, and like a water kettle and things like that. And so I would actually make rice in the pot and like eat it with seaweed and kimchi. And I would also have ramen in there and stuff. So I feel like a lot of people who do have like, you know, like who are a bit more picky with their food or have like eating restrictions, they kind of end up, you know, cooking in the dorm even though they're technically not allowed to and I was technically not allowed to 
but you work with what you have. The dining hall food wasn't like horrible or anything. I've heard it's actually better than a lot of other college dining halls, which is scary to think about. But I think I just had a worse experience with it just because I like came from eating like homemade Korean food which is also just very different from American food in general. I heard the food quality actually got worse because of COVID and like restricted kitchen staff and options and stuff. And to answer the other question about whether you can use it at places like Starbucks and Panera, yes, you can use dining, um, they're called dining dollars and you get it if you get the 12 meal plan, the 17 meal plan or the unlimited meal plan. Um, which is I think actually only 19 swipes, so it's not technically unlimited. But um, you get like, and the dining dollars increase with each plan, but I think for the 12 meal plan, you got like a hundred dining dollars or something. But basically you can use those like money at um, like a lot of the grocery stores. You can use it at Symphony Mart and then like Whole Foods. I don't think you can use it at Target, but I think you can use it. You can use it at Walston's. Walston's? Walston's? But like and like some other options, there's a whole list of it. I'll put the link for that um, down below in the description box. But there's just like different food places and mart slash grocery style um, places like Whole Foods that you can use the dining dollars at. You can use it at Starbucks. I think you can use that at Panera. I personally never used it at Panera, so I'm not too sure. But you can use it at the Starbucks. Um, in curry but there are a lot of good options my personal favorites were bangkok pinto and poke station just because i really craved uh asian food all the time but, um i did get some questions about my personal life or things that are not um directly related to northeastern and the first one is should i switch to ipads for college I hate the fact that it can die on me at any second and that if I get if it gets destroyed, I'll lose all my info. I definitely recommend if you can either afford one or have one to use an iPad for college just because it's easier to organize all of your classes. Since your classes change every semester, um, having like a notebook ded dedicated to a class can be annoying because you switch pretty quickly so personally for me i really liked having my ipad obviously i didn't actually get my ipad for college i actually got it um, for my art but um it ended up being really useful to use in college and i personally never really worried about losing it or like losing my information uh the a lot of the notes apps that you'll use and just a lot of the things that you'll use on your iPad in general can be connected to the cloud or Google Drive or like a Dropbox or something. Uh, so, you know, you don't really have to be worried about losing that ever. But if you are worried, you can, at least for me using Notability, you can always download all of your notes as PDFs and like save that onto a hard drive in your computer or something. But yeah, I've never you know, lost notes or lost information on my iPad. So I wouldn't be too afraid of that. And definitely the Apple Pencil makes it so much better. I honestly don't know if I can recommend the iPad without the Apple Pencil, because then at that point you would just be better off writing notes, typing notes on the, on your, on, on a laptop. Wow, English. Um, <laughs> typing on the iPad is honestly the worst thing ever. So if you can't afford it, Definitely, you can just use pencil and paper, and a lot of kids do. But also, if you just prefer like writing with paper and pencil, um, definitely do what works for you. I just like that it saves paper, and also I don't have to keep track of any papers really. Uh, you can also put any like PDF textbooks in there, you can, uh, and like write over it in the iPad or like worksheets and handouts that your teacher gives. A lot of professors this semester actually changed to, or this year, changed to online handouts and stopped printing them out for people because, uh, you know, COVID, they don't want to like pass out anything. But you do get like printing money. You get like $120 in printing dollars and you really, it's going to be really hard to use it all. Um, so never, you don't really have to worry about like not being able to print something. So yeah, if you can't afford it or you do have one, I personally recommend the iPad, but if you don't have one or can't afford it, definitely, you know, paper and pencil is just fine.
But the next question I have is related to this one, which is what I use to write my notes. Um, for, on my iPad, I personally use Notability. I have tried GoodNotes, but there's just something about the format that really puts me off. I kind of hate the design of the app. I hate the folders. I hate the stupid like, like cover pages and stuff. It just, I just don't like. It. It's just cleaner in my opinion. A lot of the features on GoodNotes are on Notability, so I'm not really losing out. And I just prefer Notability. I think maybe it's because I started with Notability. But I did try GoodNotes. I don't really like the interface. I don't really like the design of it. But I do know people who love it. My sister personally prefers GoodNotes. Um, so, you know, it's everyone's preferences. I can try to do a video on how I take notes on Notability on my iPad if you'd like. So let me know in the comments if you guys do want to see that. But that's what I used to take notes in college. Um, the next one is, what do you use to edit your videos? So I personally use Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, I started off with it just because my friend in Korea that kind of inspired me to start my YouTube channel. Uh, I'll put her channel right here. Um, and she's a YouTuber in Korea. She obviously has a lot more followers than me, but I met her through the art academy I was attending there called EDM. I love you guys. Um, I met so many good people through that and she was one of them, but she uses Adobe Premiere Pro and so I was like, oh, I'll, you know, that was the only one I kind of knew of at the time. But also because um, the only other option that I could think of at the time was like uh, Final Cut Pro and it's just a one-time payment, but it's like 200 something dollars. So obviously it is a lot of money all at once, which is why I started with Adobe Premiere Pro. And I was planning on switching to Final Cut Pro when I got into college, but Northeastern actually gives you free Adobe Suite just because there's a lot of design students and stuff and professors will require to use um, apps from the Adobe Suite. So Northeastern was kind enough to give that to us for free. So I'm actually using Adobe Premiere Pro for free right now. But after I leave college, I definitely think I will just be buying the one-time fee for Final Cut Pro. Okay, and then the next questions are all just about me. Um, but the first one is, what inspired you to start YouTube? It was very spontaneous, and like I said before, my YouTuber friend in Korea was the one that kind of inspired me um, to just kind of like, just start one if you want to. Like, um, it's not that big of a deal, I guess, in a sense. So yeah, I, I just kind of started one spontaneously, and it just grew into what it is now. And I'm so grateful for you guys um, for watching my videos and supporting me like this. It truly means the world to me and it's still so crazy that I even have like more than like a hundred subscribers I don't even know if I know 2,000 people which is where I am now which is so freaking cool but yeah okay and then the next one is what were your hobbies pre-covid genuinely and I feel like my sister and I talked about this a lot but we really wondered if we had any hobbies other than like watching movies and like binge watching Korean dramas and things like that but I will say I did participate in a lot of church activities. I was part of like the student leadership team and praise team and stuff. I really like singing. I'm definitely not very good at it, but I do really like singing. <laughs> Before I started my Etsy shop, I did like drawing and um, my favorite was calligraphy. And I thought I would actually start my YouTube channel for calligraphy, if anything, um, but I ended up not doing that. Um, so yeah i'd say those were my main hobbies before covid but yeah i wouldn't say my hobbies necessarily changed that much um post covid but i would say i've de definitely had less time to really do any hobbies um and obviously it's changed to where youtube and etsy are my main hobbies slash kind of like part of my work life so the very last question is what is the one thing you'll never regret for being where you are? Wow, very deep question. I didn't think I would actually get that many personal questions. I definitely, there's a there's so many things I feel like everyone just like regrets about their life. Like as you just grow, you realize things about your past that you could have done differently or wish you could have been a better person or something. But I think as much as I'll regret a lot of the things about how I got to where I am, 
for one thing, I'll never regret where I am currently. I feel so blessed to be where I am where I have a YouTube channel and I have an Etsy shop and it is doing pretty well and my YouTube channel is continuing to grow. I'm in college. Um, I'm able to learn um, and go and attend a really nice college in Boston. Um, yeah, there's just so much I'm grateful for and blessed to have in my life at this time. And I never could have imagined that this is what my college life would look like. And I'm genuinely like just so happy about it. And I don't regret where I am now. I think as much as I kind of hate some of the parts of how I got here, in a sense, I don't regret any of like my life in the past because it's ultimately what's brought me here. Yeah, but that was it. Um, I hope this wasn't too long and I hope this was indeed helpful uh, to you guys. Thank you so much for asking me all these questions on Instagram and YouTube. I was so scared that I wouldn't have enough questions to ask or answer. So thank you so much for watching. Please ask me more questions if you have any. I know regular decisions are slowly coming out and they will fully be out I believe on April 1st or on April 1st. So if you guys have any more questions then, definitely hit me up on Instagram or comment down below or on any of my videos. And as you guys know from my last video, I am an RA next year or I will be an RA next year. So if you guys do get me as your RA, please reach out to me. I swear I don't bite. Um, and I would definitely love to meet all of you guys. So if you guys also just see me hanging around um, the Boston area or on campus, you know, say hi, I really don't mind. I might look at you funny at first just because I'm not sure who you are, <laughs> but um, definitely say hi, I'm totally cool with you guys reaching out to me. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>